Hello, people of science. Let's talk about genetics, which is uh, basically passing on your genes down to the next generation. All those things coded for by DNA, our code of life. All right, it all starts with an Austrian monk called Gregor Mendel. He was a monk who studied different characteristics in peas or traits. Now, some of these traits were like seed shape, seed color, seed coat color, podge, like all those things like we think of eye color, hair color, all that different stuff in humans. He studied the equivalent stuff essentially in peas. Was he looking at the height of the plant? Was he looking at where the flowers were, the tip or a lawn? Was he looking at the pod shape? Was he looking at the pod color, the seed shape? the seed color, or even the seed coat color. He was looking at all those different things, studying them, watching how they were passed on generation to generation. So if a pea was round or wrinkled. So he had this idea, and I don't want you to write this, I just want you to follow along. He had this thing called the pea generation or the parental generation. He had these pure breeding yellow peas and pure breeding green peas. And when he crossed them, essentially made babies, yes, you can do that with plants, this first filial generation, F1 generation, he thought would be kind of a blend. If you take yellow and green and you mix them together, he thought that it would get this yellowish greenish mix, kind of the way you think of like uh, mixing paint. However, what happened when he actually tested that hypothesis, he crossed pure breeding yellow with pure breeding green, that F1 generation was all yellow. His hypothesis was incorrect, and the first generation had characteristics of only one parent. That was interesting to him. So the question was, where did that green characteristic go? I mean, it was almost complete, or sorry, it was completely missing. So he came up with this idea, the principle of dominance, how the yellow parent was dominant to the green parent in this case here. Now, here's the difference between a scientist and a non-scientist. A non-scientist might say, huh, that's kind of weird, whereas a scientist would also say that's weird. But the difference is a non-scientist would give up there, and a scientist would say, well, what? that's odd. Let's investigate this. So he investigated it. He took that F1 generation, that first one, the yellow and the green cross, and he got all yellow, and he actually bred those. Yes, it's breeding siblings together, it's kind of incest, don't think about it too much. In any case, what happened is that F2 generation, the second generation, huh, the, tra the trait reappeared in the second generation. And 75% of them became, or approximately 75%, three quarters, were yellow, and about 25% of them were green. This is something I do want you to write and draw in your notes. Just how the parents, yellow and green, had babies, that first generation, all yellow. But when you bred together some of those, that trait reappeared the second time through. And it wasn't partially yellow, it was totally green. The exact same as its grandfather, or grandmother, or grand hermaphroditic plant, because plants don't have genetics. Anyways, so that trait reappeared there with no trace that it had ever come from yellow parents. Yeah, that's Mendel essentially, you know, teased it. Anyways. So the conclusions that he drew from this is that inheritance is determined by factors that you pass on from one generation to the next. We would call those today genes, things that you're passing on down. G-E-N-E-S, not genes like blue genes. Each trait, like seed color, appeared in either two different forms. In this case, it was either the yellow seed or the green seed. So we call these different forms of genes alleles. Like if we have the trait as eye color, you've got blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes, hazel. All of those are different alleles of the original trait. So in this case right here, some of them are dominant, some of them are recessive. You can see, but they're different versions of that same idea, different versions of that trait. So he came up with this principle of dominance. Some alleles are dominant and other alleles are recessive. What we saw before is that the yellow allele was dominant and the green allele was recessive. Yellow overshadowed the green. So this is genes made out of DNA. These are skinny genes. Ah, I'm sorry. Now, when you have a dominant trait, that is something that is always going to appear when the dominant allele is present. And I don't need you to write this. You probably know this is also in your vocab. So we almost always write dominant traits in capital letters to show how they are over the others. In this case, this brown hair is big B, big B. However, this recessive trait, it's you only see that when the dominant one's not around. So we always write these in lowercase letters, and here we have something like blonde hair that's only going to appear these two recessive alleles when that dominant one is not around to shove it out of its way. So dominant traits, you'll see no matter what, as long as the allele's there. Recessive, you only see it when there's no dominant one to push it around. So going back to that F1 cross, that was the cross between the two yellow offspring, the dominant allele covered it, and we saw only yellow ones. However, when that recessive allele showed up in the F2 cross, where you were able to see 25% of them as green. Again, you don't need to write this through the parentheses. 
Now we need to know a couple last terms here, phenotype and genotype. Physical appearance is phenotype. The phenotype of this person here is blue eyes. The phenotype of this person here is brown eyes or whatever color you want to call that there. The genotype is the listing of those alleles and obviously you don't see that. No one has like bid, b, bid, b written across them. But genotype is kind of hidden. It's what's inside your chromosomes that you can't see. In this case, it's either big Y, big Y, big Y, little Y, or little Y, little Y. So when I say phenotype, I'm asking, what does it actually look like? When I say genotype, I'm saying, what are the alleles? Two dominant, dominant recessive, two recessive, et cetera, et cetera. So right here, there's the genotype. And obviously, people don't walk around with giant letters next to them. All right, people probably don't walk around with giant letters, but it's there. The genotype, is the letters, the phenotype is the physical appearance. Her phenotype is brown hair. Her phenotype is blonde hair. Her genotype is bid b bid b. Her genotype is little b little b. So our pure breeding yellow peas were bid y bid y. Remember they had two dominant alleles there. So that was pure breeding. Our pure breeding green peas, they had the two recessive alleles, little y little y. And anything that we would call a hybrid, when you cross those, you're going to get big y little y. And remember, it's going to be yellow due to the dominance of that yellow allele.